today we are going to do unit fractions, which is chapter 10, lesson one. So a fraction is a number that represents an equal part of a whole or an equal part of a set. And I know we've done a little bit with fractions when we went into division a little bit, but now we're going to go more into fractions. And don't worry, you're not going to have to do a lot of multiplication or division, but we are going to do stuff with your fraction bars, which should be in the box that I sent. So let's go to example one. Danny shared his granola bar with Steph. He broke it into two equal pieces. What fraction of the granola bar did each receive? So you might be able to do this one without even getting out your fraction bars. If I took a granola bar and I broke it into two separate pieces, how many pieces would I have? I'd have one half and one half. I'd have two equal pieces. And you can see in this example up here, we've got one and two. So what fraction tiles did we place? We placed one half tiles. So each person received one over two or one half of a whole granola bar. And this is showing us unit fractions. So unit fractions represent one equal part of the whole. The top number of a unit fraction is one. It is always one. So we can have, like we had up here, one half, or we can have one third, or one fourth, or one fifth. Those are all examples of unit fractions. So example two, one whole is divided into four equal parts. What unit fraction represents one equal part of the whole? So if we know we have four equal parts, and they show us down here, one, two, three, four. So one part over the four, and partitioned means to separate into equal pieces. So we have one over four, so the fraction is one fourth. Okay. Now to the next page. So example three. Ian made a loaf of bread as his final project in health class. He divided the loaf equally among some students. Each student received one eighth of the loaf. How many equal parts did Ian cut the loaf? So we're gonna use our fraction tiles, one and one eighth, and we're gonna draw a model. So here's that whole loaf and how many eight pieces can I put in this one loaf? So I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can fit eight. And we know that because he split the loaf into eight pieces. So there are eight equal parts each equal size part is one eighth. So each one of these is one eighth. So Ian cut the loaf into eight equal parts or eighths. Now on to guided practice. So we're dividing the whole into equal parts and then labeling each part with its unit fraction. So number one, two equal parts. We're just gonna split this right in half and then we have one part and one part. Number two, we have four equal parts. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. And each one of these, our unit fraction is always gonna have a four on top, or a one on top and a four on the bottom. One on top, four on the bottom. One, fourth, and eight. And we have to be careful when we're drawing eight because there's a lot of little lines and we wanna make sure we just have eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each one of these is one eighth. Okay, next page. So we're on to the independent practice. We're gonna divide the whole into equal parts and then label each part with its unit fraction. So number four, we're gonna split into three parts. One, two, three, and our unit fraction always has a three on top, has a one on top, 
I'm gonna keep catching myself on one on top and a three on the bottom. One on top and a three on the bottom. One on top and three on the bottom. Six equal parts. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. One on top, six on the bottom because we have six equal parts. So one, six, one, six, one, six, one, six. And one six. Now we're on different instructions. So we're going to write how many equal parts, shade one of those parts, and then write its unit fraction. So how many boxes do we have here? We have one, two, three, four. So we have four equal parts. And then it asks us to shade one of those. And so our unit fraction is always a one on top. And our parts are four. So here we have two equal parts, we shade one of those, and our unit fraction, always one on top, and our total number of parts on the bottom, so one half. Number eight, we have one, two, three equal parts, three, and then we shade one of these. Our unit fraction is always one on top, and our total on the bottom, so one third. And so let's look at the difference between eight and nine. So both of these have three equal parts and we shade just one of them on each one of those. So our unit fraction is the same as one third. So this is showing us that we can have one third in any shape. We could have one third of this square, one third of this rectangle, one third of this circle. The unit fraction is always gonna be one third. Now we're gonna circle the correct unit fraction for the shaded section of each model. For this one, all we gotta do is count how many squares we have. So we've got one, two, three, four. It's gonna be one fourth. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One eighth. Over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One sixth. And what I want to show you is see how each one of these is in a different spot. So we have this shaded over here and this piece here and this piece here. It doesn't matter where you shade it. If they just shaded one piece, then that's the unit fraction. Now we have 13. We have one, two pieces. 14, we have one, two, three pieces. And 15, we have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So just like up here, 12 and 15 both have six pieces and both have the unit fraction of one sixth, even though they're different shapes. So now on to page four. So this is our word problem. So Max folded a piece of paper in half. Then he folded it in half one more time. How many equal sized parts did he have when he opened that paper? What unit fraction represents each part? So I want you to think back to that test we took where we folded all those paper together and we punched holes in it. And this is even gonna be a little bit simpler because we're not punching holes in anything. So we're gonna take that piece of paper and we fold it in half and we fold it in half again. So how many pieces do we have? We have one, two, three, four. We can say four parts. And what unit fraction represents each part? So we know there's always gonna be a one on top and our total number of parts is on the bottom. Number 17. So Jenny is holding a fraction tile labeled one third. How many one third fraction tiles are needed to equal the fraction tile labeled one? So you can use your fraction tiles and lay out one that says one and get out your one third tiles and how many do we need to fill in that one? Well, we already know that since three is on the bottom, there are gonna be three parts. So we can say three tiles. Okay. Number 18. Mr. Klinger divided the gymnasium floor into eight equal sections. I'm gonna draw lines and divide the whole into equal parts. 
then label each part with its unit fraction. So they want us to divide this into eight equal parts. So we have one part, two parts, three parts, four parts, five parts, six parts, seven parts, and eight parts. And we know our unit fraction is always going to be a one on top, and our total number on the bottom, which is eight. One eighth, one eighth, and draw that all the way across. Give me one eighth all the way across. Okay, so number 19. How are all unit fractions alike and how are they different? So, what have I been saying this whole time? I've been saying that all unit fractions have a one on the top. So, all unit fractions have a one on top, or as we'll learn, in the numerator. And how are they different? So we can say, but the denominators, or what's on the bottom, denominator, D-E-N-O-M-I-N-A-T-O-R, S are different. Okay, so number 20, what happens to the size of each equal part when you divide it into more and more equal parts? So it might be good to visualize this one. So say I have a candy bar and I split it in half. So each person gets one half. And if I want to split it, so if there are four people, well, now we have four pieces, but the pieces are a whole lot smaller. And if I split it into eight pieces, pieces get even smaller. So what happens to each equal part when you divide the whole? They get smaller. Okay. And so next is your homework. So you have page 573 and 574 is your homework. And you're gonna have to do these on your own. But let me just show you these first couple. So number one, we're gonna split this into four equal parts and then label it with its unit fraction. So we're gonna split it into four equal parts. You can think of it just like that paper example up there. And then we split it with our unit fractions. So one always on top and our total on the bottom. Always think of your total number. So we have two, six, three. That's always gonna be your bottom number. And this is the same as we were doing on that other page. You need to count how many parts there are, write our unit fraction, and remember to shade one part to show us what that unit fraction is. Okay, so. I think you are all set. Good luck.